is for everyone. As someone who knows that she is a Hebrew Israelite, I want it to be known that salvation is for everyone. If you repent and follow the ways of Yahushua HaMashiach, our Hebrew Messiah, you can be saved. If you are being taught that salvation is only for a certain group of people, then you are being led astray. It is not in our Messiah's character to reject people that actually want to follow him. Now that we've addressed that, I want to address this. You don't have to deny your bloodline in order to share the gospel. If you're being taught that you have to choose between your bloodline and sharing the gospel, you are being led astray. Last time I checked, the Messiah came in the flesh, didn't deny his bloodline, and still shared the gospel. Make sure you are in the word for yourself to ensure that you aren't being led astray. As someone who knows that she is a Hebrew Israelite, I want it to be known that salvation is for everyone. If you repent and follow the ways of Yahushua HaMashiach, our Hebrew Messiah, you can be saved. If you are being taught that salvation is only for a certain group of people, then you are being led astray. It is not in our Messiah's character to reject people that actually want to follow him. Now that we've addressed that, I want to address this. You don't have to deny your bloodline in order to share the gospel. If you're being taught that you have to choose between your bloodline and sharing the gospel, you are being led astray. Last time I checked, the Messiah came in the flesh, didn't deny his bloodline, and still shared the gospel. Make sure you are in the word for yourself to ensure that you aren't being led astray. Shalom. Before I start, I want to give all honors and glories and praises to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Maha Wakakodash, Yahweh, which is the one true name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, but his one true name is Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone who will well and teach well, because those are the men who I learned this truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashim Yahashai. Peace, blessings, salutations to the hopeful elect. And shalom to you, sincere brothers scattered abroad, pushing forth this word in truth and sincerity. I am the brother Mashiach, Irazaka, from the servants of Yahweh Wai, Yahweh Shai Camp, Las Vegas, Nevada. And pretty much in this lesson, we're going to go into the basics salvation is not for everybody salvation is not for everybody salvation is only given to the israelites now you have these worldly women you know they have the concepts of the religion under the 501c3 charter of these churches you know apostolic mormon jehovah witness baptist you know, um, Mormon, you know, um, I said apostolic already. All these churches, they're under the 501c3. And that doctrine that's under the 501c3 is given by the Vatican, which is the Roman Catholic Church. They established these false doctrines. And then you always, out of all, always, it's always the so-called Negro woman flapping her gums trying to make a point where she wants her oppressor to be saved and you can't save your oppressor your oppressor can't be saved he's going into slavery and you gotta fucking accept it and deal with it there's always a israelite negro it's always judah the negro woman is always a westernized negro woman that can't accept that her slave master cannot be saved he's not being saved he's going into slavery Salvation is only given to the Israelites. So we're going to prove that in this lesson. And then the thing I wanted to say too before I start is she's getting confused with those Gentiles that is in the New Testament. You have two types of Gentiles, by the way. You have the you have uh, natural heathens, which are not of Israelite descent. And then you have the Israelites with a Gentile state of mind. You know, again, we can easily prove that. When you go into Romans 1 and 16, because that's I'm sure she's going into Romans 1 and 16, Romans 11 and 11, uh, Galatians 3, 28. That's all talking about Israelites. That's talking about Israelites and Israelite foreigners. You had Israelites in that time of the Roman Empire, the Greek Empire. They were Hellenized. They were in a ways 
of the Greeks. They were speaking Greek, dressing Greek. They were in the ways of the Greeks. They were cast out as heathens. And we said that many times. So we're going to do a lesson on this. Back to the basics. Salvation is not given to everybody. Salvation is only given to the Israelites. Again, you got Israelites that scatter abroad throughout the four corners of the earth. They may not look like a so-called Negro, Hispanic, or Native American Indian, but they are an Israelite due to the seed line of their father being a so-called Negro, Hispanic, or Native American Indian. So you got the Israelites, and you got the you got the foreigner Israelites, right? The Israelites that are scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. All right. So let's start out with let's start out with Galatians three twenty-eight. Right? This is Galatians 3.28. That's talking about Israelite foreigners. Alright? That's what that's talking about. Because you got Rocky Tiger Christians, they'll read this. Galatians 3 and 28, right? This is Galatians 3.28. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Yahweh Hamashiach. That Greek there is talking about Israelite foreigners. They were Hellenized during of the time of the of the Greek Empire, the Greek Empire and the Roman Empire. Again, when you go to Daniel 7, it talks about the four beasts that's coming out of the sea. The four beasts is talking about the uh Babylonian Empire, the Medio Persian Empire, the Greek Empire, and the Roman Empire. Right? And then you have the the sea, the Great Sea, which is talking about the Mediterranean Sea. When you read Daniel the seventh chapter. So when you look at those dynasties or those times, those are Israelites going through the affliction of those heathens, right? The Babylonian Empire with Nebuchadnezzar, right? Then you had the uh, uh, the Medio Persian Empire, right? With Darius the Mede, right? Then you had the Greek Empire starting with Alexander the Great. Then you had the Roman Empire. You see, the Roman Empire came in. So you got to understand who are those Greeks that's mentioned in these scriptures. So that Greek there is talking about Israelites that had a Hel that had a Hellenistic mindset. They were Israelites of the flesh, but they were in the ways of the Greeks, going back into uh, Ptolemy, Seleucus, right? Ptolemy, Seleucus, uh, 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 and Lysimachus, right? Ptolemy, Cassandor, Seleucus, and Lysimachus. But during the time of the Seleucid rule, you had the Antiochus. You had Antiochus the first, Antiochus the second, Antiochus the third, and the fourth Epiphanes. And the Israelites were Hellenized under Antiochus the fourth Epiphanes. He Hellenized the Israelites. They couldn't keep the Sabbaths. I said that many times. They couldn't keep the Sabbath. They couldn't sacrifice. They couldn't um, circumcise their children, right? They couldn't keep the Sabbath days. They couldn't keep the laws. If they were caught doing that, they were executed and put to death. So they started taking on the way of the heathen. They were Hellenized. They started speaking Greek. They started dressing Greek. They even took on the Greek names. They went from Israelite names to going into Greek names. So when you go into Galatians three and twenty-eight, and I could prove that. When you go into 1 Maccabees, the first chapter, it goes into the rising of the Greek Empire. When you go into 2 Maccabees, the sixth chapter, it goes into the Hellenization of the Israelites, right, during the Greek Empire. So that Greek there that you read where it says there is neither Jew nor Greek, the Jew there is talking about Judah, all right, the southern kingdom, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Because again, when you go into Daniel 7, the northern kingdom already fell to the Assyrian Empire. And then after that, they revolted from the Assyrian Empire and went to a land where no man dwelt. So when you go into the uh, the uh, Babylonian Empire, the, the uh, Medio Persian Empire, the Greek Empire, the Roman Empire, that's all the southern kingdom that went through that. They went through the the the, the, the Babylonian Empire. That was the southern kingdom went through that. The Babylonian Empire, right? The Medio Persian Empire, the Greek Empire, and the Roman Empire. That's all southern kingdom. Northern kingdom all was already in another place. Because after the Assyrian Empire, Right, they revolted against the Syrian Empire and they went to a land where no man dwelt, which they were in a whole nother land somewhere else. So you had the southern kingdom that went through that. So that's why when you read in the New Testament and it says Galatians three and twenty eight, there is neither Jew nor Greek. The Jew there stands for Judah. That's talking about the southern kingdom. Judah as its capital, Jerusalem as its capital, which is Judah, which is the southern kingdom, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. That's what that's talking about. It says nor Greek. That was Israelites with a Greek thought process. They were in the ways of the Greeks. They spoke Greek, Drex Greek. They were in the ways of the Greeks due to the Hellenization period of Antiochus the Fourth Epiphanes. And he reigned, Antiochus the Fourth Epiphanes, he reigned from 165 BC to 174 BC. You can look that up. Anybody can look that up. So when you go into the New Testament and it talks about Gentiles being saved, that's talking about Israelite foreigners. That's what that's talking about. So when you read this scripture, it says, There is neither Jew nor Greek, there's neither bond nor free. 
there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Yahweh Shai Mashiach. That is talking about Israelites and Israelite foreigners. The Israelite foreigners were the ones that were Hellenized. They were in the ways of the Greeks. So when the Messiah stepped foot on the scene and he chosen his 12 apostles, you had Apostle Paul, right? His name was Saul, but it was changed to Paul, right? He went to the Gentiles. That's talking about the Israelite foreigners. They were in the city of Galatia. They were in the city of Corinth. Corinth is an ancient city. You had the city of Corinth. You had Thessalonians. You had, you had Titus. Titus, right, goes into uh, where uh, Apostle Paul went to there. He went to Titus, right, which was which is uh, uh, this, to speak to the Cretans, right? which were Creeks, those were Israelite foreigners. Rome, Romans, those epistles that he wrote to the Romans, those were Israelites that he wrote the letters to. Those Gentiles that you hear in the New Testament were Israelite foreigners. You can look that up. They were all in those different areas. That's why when it says the apostles, they received that utterance when they were speaking different dialects and different languages, those were to the foreigner Israelites. They were speaking uh, 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 Arab language, all these other languages, because they were in captivity in those regions and they learned those languages. An Apostle Paul, he written those epistles to those foreigner Israelites. So they were cast out as Gentiles. It wasn't talking about natural heathens. So you got to be careful. You got to be careful for that. Galatians 3.28. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Yahweh Shai Masiach. That's talking about Israelites to Israelite foreigners. So that's what that's talking about there. That Greek there is talking about Israelite foreigners. Let's go to Romans 1 and 16. Because you got Christians, they'll use this here. You have to understand what the scriptures, who is referring to. Because you might see Gentile. You might see Greek there. That's talking about Israelite foreigners. That's what that's talking about. That's not talking about natural heathens, man. That's Christianity 501c3 madness. Romans 1 and 16. This is the thing that Christians get fucked up on when they read this here. Excuse my friends. They get messed. They get misconstrued here. Romans 1 and 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. For it is the power of the Most High unto salvation, you see, to everyone that believeth. To the Jew first, that's talking about the Israelites, that's in the truth, right? The Israelites is in the heritage, the truth, their religion, right? We have a pure religion, right? To the Jew first and also to the Greek. That Greek is talking about Israelite foreigners. Hellenization. Israelites that were Hellenized, right? That's what that's talking about. Israelites that were Hellenized. That's what that Romans 1 and 16 is talking about. That Greek there. Let's prove it. Acts chapter 6 and verse 1. Anybody can read this. Acts 6 and 1. And in those days when the number of the disciples were multiplied, there arose murmuring of Grecians. So go into the Greek of that word Grecian there. Right? Against the Hebrews because of their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Now, when we go into the interliner of that word Grecian Greece, Greece there, it goes into the uh, Greek word of uh, G17, I think it's G1747, which goes into uh, 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 Elaine Stace, which goes to the English translation of Hellenus. Because the English translation of, of, of Hellenus is the Greek word El Elaine Stace, which is talking about a Greek speaking Jew. You had Israelites, yeah, you had Jews of the southern kingdom, uh, Jews that were speaking Greek. Yes, they were dressing Greek, they were speaking Greek. They were in the ways of the Greeks. We can prove that, right? It's 75. G1675, not 17. G1675. Salakia. It's G1675, which is what? Strong's G1675. Helene Stace. Helene Stace. See? Helene Stace, right? Which is a Hellenist. So the, the Greek word for Hellenist is Helene Stace. That word Eleni Stace, the English of the word is a Hellenist. A Hellenist. What's a Hellenist? One who imitates the manner and customs of the worship of the Greeks. And that's what the Israelites did. They took on the ways of the Greeks. They were speaking Greek. They were dressing Greek. They went from Israelite names to taking on Greek names. They started following out the way of the heathens because they were oppressed. They were Hellenized. So they started worshiping. They were in the Greeks. They started worshiping. You know, the worship of the Greeks, they start taking on the customs of the Greeks, right? They even took on the, the tongue speaking of the Greeks, right? It says, and used Greek, right? And used the Greek tongue. They spoke Greek. They dressed Greek. They started following the ways of the Greeks. So when you go to the New Testament and you see Greek there, that's talking about Israelite foreigners. I've said it many times. That's talking about Israelite foreigners. Let's prove it. It says used in the New Testament, the New Testament, right? So when you see Romans 1 and 
uh, 1 in 26, I think it was 1 in 16, right? Romans 1 in 16. You see Galatians 3, 28, right? You'll see uh, uh, Romans 11, 11. That's talking about Israelite foreigners. That's all talking about, nothing changes. That's all talking about Israelite foreigners. You had Israelites that was in the truth, in the heritage, and you had the Israelites that were Hellenized. You had Israelites of the flesh that were Hellenized. They were dressing Greek, speaking Greek. They were in the ways of the Greeks. You can look up the secular history about that. You can put in ancient Israelites, Hellenized, and Antiochus, Antiochus the fourth, is going to pop up. Antiochus. When you look up during the Seleucid rule of the Greek Empire, look up Antiochus. You can even go to the P Ptolemy period of the Empire of Ptolemy. You had Israelites over there. So when you go into the scriptures and you and you hear uh, Gentile, Greek, it says to the Jew first, also to the Greek. That's all talk. That Greek there is talking about Israelite foreigners. That's what it's talking about. Right. Let's get to the main point. Using the New Testament of, of Jews. See, Israelites, Jews. Jew stands for short for Judah. Judah. Right. Judah, the southern kingdom. Judah, Benjamin and Levi. That's the southern kingdom. That's the kingdom of Judah. The southern kingdom. As Jerusalem as its capital. Right. You had Judah, which Judah stands for the southern kingdom, which is Judah, Benjamin and Levi. That's the southern kingdom. The southern kingdom went through the Babylonian Empire, the Medio Persian Empire. You had the Medes that came. Then you had the Persians that came after. That's why the scriptures say one was higher than the other. Because you had the Medes that came, and then you had the Persians that came after the Medes, and the Medes were the Persians was, was mightier than the Medes. So you had the Medes, then you had the Persians, then you had the Greeks, and then you had the Romans. The the Southern Kingdom went through that. You gotta see when you don't understand the secular history, you're gonna get misconstrued with the scriptures. You're not gonna understand. You gotta go into the history. That's how you're gonna see. Like, oh, that's who the that's who the Gentiles are. When it says Greek. That's what it's talking about. It's talking about Israelite foreigners with a Hellenistic mindset. You can anybody that don't believe me in this video, go and look it up. That's that's a thing. It's easy to say you read the Bible, but you gotta really look up the secular history. It's all on it's all on YouTube. You can look this information. Everything I'm saying, you can literally Google it. You can literally look it up. All right, you can literally look it up. Stop trying to bring the white man to salvation. He's never gonna receive your your slave master. I'm being blunt. Your slave master is not receiving salvation. His ass is going into slavery. You gotta fucking accept that shit. Stop trying to save them, right? It says, used in the New Testament of Jews born in foreign lands, right? And speaking Greek. They were dressing Greek. They were speaking Greek. They were in the ways of the Greeks. They were, they were, they were, they were among the Greeks. They learned the way of the heathen, right? They were Hellenized. You had Hellenized Israelites. It says, a Hellenist. It says it right here. Strong definitions. Hellenistase. stays. Hellene stays from the derivative of 1672. A Hellenist or Greek-speaking Jew. So when you hear that word Greek there, you read Romans 1 and 16, you read in Galatians, uh, what's that, 3 and 28, that's talking about Israelite foreigners. That's, that's that Greek there is talking about Israelites with a Hellenistic mindset. They were in the ways of the Greeks. They had a Gentile state. They were Israelites of the flesh with a Gentile, Gentile state of mind. All right. Now, I hope that makes sense now. So now, now that you know that that's talking about Israelite foreigners, now you know who salvation is for. Salvation. So who is salvation given to? Let's find out who is salvation given to. We're going to get more precepts, but I'm going to go to the New Testament and we're going to read Matthew 10 and we're going to start at verse one because the Messiah, he did set up 12 apostles. He did set up the 12 disciples, right? But when he spoke to them, he sent them places. He didn't just send them, go, okay, go over to the natural Gentile, natural heathens. That's not of Israelite descent. Go and save them. Go and save them. Go and save them. No, then the, they, the heathen nations, this, there's 18 nations, right? You have the 18, you have 18 nations. The Lord created 18 nations, but he's only dealing with one specific nation out of the 18. That consists of the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. That's who the Lord is dealing with. The Lord made a covenant with our forefathers. We have an everlasting covenant. The Lord never made a covenant with the heathen nations. So how can they be saved? They're not, they're, they're not, they weren't given the covenants. They weren't given the covenants, the promises. None of that was given to the heathens. That was given to the Israelites, the Israelites. That's why Yahweh Shai came back and died because the nation of Israel, they broke the old covenant. We didn't keep the law, statutes, and commandments. So the Lord, he had to come back on the earth to give us our second shot. This is why we got temporal grace right now. We, well, this is temporal. We don't have eternal grace. Grace is temporal. So we got our second shot now to be able to get our second chance to receive salvation. 
Salvation is only given to the Israelite. The Messiah came, he died for the nation of Israel. I'm going to prove that too. The Messiah died for the nation of Israel. When he came down here on the earth to dwell amongst this earth in the flesh, he came to fulfill his mission. And what was his mission? What was his purpose? What was his lot? To die for the nation of Israel to be able to receive repentance. That's what the Messiah came on the earth for. If you disagree with that, do not watch this video. Matthew 10 and 1. It says, and when he had called unto his, called unto him, his 12 disciples, who were the 12 disciples? Who were the 12 disciples? The 12 apostles, right? It says, he gave them power against unclean spirits, right? To cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases. See, this is what the Messiah, he set up, he set up his 12 uh, disciples. Like it. His 12 disciples, his 12 apostles. He set that up, right? The Lord set that up. Verse 2. Now the names of the 12 apostles are these. These are the name of the 12 disciples, the 12 apostles, right? It says the first Simon, who's, who is called Peter, right? You had Peter. It says, and Andrew, his brother. You had Andrew. James, the son of Zebedee. You had James, right? John, his brother. You had John. Philip, you had Philip. Bethlehem, you had Bethlehem. Thomas, you had Thomas. Matthew, the publican, you had Matthew. James, the son of Alphaeus, you, it says Al Alphaeus and Labanus, whose surname is Thaddeus, you had Thaddeus, right? Simon, the Canaanite, which Simon, it says Canaanite there, but he lived in, this, in, the, in the place called Canaan. So he was called a Canaanite, but he was an Israelite, just like how we're called American citizens. We're not called Israelites here in America, right? We live in a place called America. Work what? America, American citizens. So he he was a Canaanite. He was an Israelite, but he lived around in the city of Canaan. So he was called a Canaanite, but he wasn't a he wasn't a heathen. He was an Israelite. It says in Judas the Iscariot, who was an Israelite, who also betrayed him, because Judas betrayed Judas Iscariot betrayed the Messiah. That was his lot, right? Verse five. These twelve, Yahweh sent forth. See these twelve. He 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 set up twelve disciples, right? Let's, it's going to get to the main point. I know people are saying, when? Get to the main point. We're getting to the main point. Verse 5. These 12, Yahweh Shai sent forth, commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles. Now, this is why we say you got to be careful when you read in the scriptures. Because you'll, you'll read a scripture and it'll say, Go not into the way of the Gentiles. You'll, you you, 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 you got to think about that because you'll sit and think and be like, Okay, Gentiles. It's talking about it's talking about uh, natural heathens. Which we, do we know that this scripture is talking about Natural Gentiles, natural Gentiles, meaning uh, 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 people that are not of Israelite descent, that have no blood traits to Jacob. They're natural heathens, right? It says saying, go not into the way of the Gentiles. So this is talking about heathen nations here. This is talking about natural heathens, right? Which are not of Israelite descent. This is why when you read the scriptures, you got to be careful because sometimes they'll say something about Gentiles receiving salvation. And that's talking about Israelite foreigners. Then when you read this, it says, go not into the way of the Gentiles. This is talking about natural Gentiles. It says, and into any city of the Samaritans, into you not. Because the Samaritans is, is, is in Jerusalem, right? But you had heathens that were um, amongst the Israelites, right? You had just like going into the Samaritan woman. That Samaritan woman, she was a heathen. Because the Israelites, they don't deal with Samaritans. They don't deal with heathens. They don't deal with the Samaritans, right? So you got to understand when you read in the scriptures, you got to understand what is going on there. So when it says go not into any, it says, and it says, and go not into any city of the Samaritans into you not. Because that's where the natural heathens are. So the Lord was telling, the Lord was telling the disciples, don't go there. Right. Verse six, but go rather to the lost sheep. Who are the lost sheep? The Israelites that have a Gentile state of mind. The lost sheep. Because this verse five, that's talking about natural heathens. Don't go to the. To the city of Samaritans, right? It says, and into any city of the Samaritans, into you not, because those are heathens over there, right? But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, because you had the lost sheep that was in the mix of all those heathen nations that was in the city of Samaritans. You had heathens in the Samaritans. Yes, you had heathens there. Verse 7, it says, and as ye go, preach. See, so the Lord told them as they go there, preach to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, the Israelites. The ones that are having a Gentile state of mind. He's talking about those. The Israelite foreigners. Right? It says, But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Verse 7. And as ye go, as you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So that's who the Lord sent his 12 apostles for. So now, now that you understand this, so when you read Apostle Paul's letters, 
That's talking about Israelite foreigners, the lost sheep. That's where he sent this. That's where Yahweh Shai, the Messiah, sent his 12 disciples to, the lost sheep. It says it right here, the lost sheep, right? But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Israel scattered. So when they went to the city of Corinth, Galatia, right? Thessalonians, uh, uh, Timothy, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, right? Romans, just giving up Galatians. You know, um, thinking of 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, those are all letters written to the foreign Israelites. From Romans all the way through. Ephesians, Ephesus, those are letters written of Apostle Paul, but he written them to the foreign Israelites that were in those cities. Ephesus is a city. Uh, 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 what's that? The city of Corinth. That's a city. Corinthians, those are letters written to Corinthians, which were Israelites in the city of Corinth, that were called Corinthians. Thessalonians, those are letters written to the Israelites. That's not talking about natural heathens. Verse 6, it says, But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and as ye go preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. So that's where the twelve apostles went to. They went to the foreigner Israelites, not natural Gentiles. He didn't go to natural Gentiles. No heathen can receive salvation. If, if that pisses you off, I'm sorry. It is what it is. Deal with it. I'm not even going to say sorry. It is what it is. Deal with it. You have to deal with that shit. Right? Verse Matthew 15, 24. But he's but he answered and said, right? See, look, this is the Messiah. But he answered and said, I am not sent. So the Messiah, when he came here on the earth, when he dwelt in the flesh, he didn't come for every fucking body of the world. He came for the Israelites. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So that's who we know where salvation is for. Salvation is only given to the Israelites. When the Messiah came in the mortal flesh, he came on the earth in the flesh. He came on the earth on the flesh. He died for the nation of Israel. His mission was to fish for the elect. Pretty much save the save save Israel from their sins. When he died here, he gave us our second shot of grace. His temperance was for grace. We do have grace. But it was given only to the Israelites. When he came on the earth, his mission was to die for the Israelites. So us to be able to get grafted back to the Father to receive salvation. That's pretty much what I'm, what I'm trying to say. Salvation is given to the Israelites. It's in the scriptures. And if you can't understand that, that's on you. Everybody's not going to be saved. And not even all Israel is going to be saved. Only a remnant is going to be saved. But salvation is actually only given to the Israelites, though. That's who salvation is mainly for, the Israel. Right? Isaiah 45 and 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord. Right? But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. See? So we have an everlasting salvation. Everlasting salvation. Everybody's not going to be saved. Not even Israel. Even though even though they have a chance to be saved, not all Israel is going to be saved. Zechariah 13, they say that. Two-thirds of Israel has to be put to death. The Lord going to kill two-thirds of the nation of Israel. That's 666%. That's 66.6%. .6%. Not all Israel is going to be saved. Not all Israel is going to be saved. Only a remnant is going to be saved, which we're hoping to be. We're hoping to be of the elect. Right? But salvation is granted only for the Israelites. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. So salvation is only given to the Israelites. It's not given to all people. Let's get out Amos. We can keep going. Amos 3 and 1. Amos 3 and 1. It says, Here is this word. It says, Hear this word. So I can hear this word that the Lord have spoken against you, O children of Israel. Is that saying everybody there? No. It says, O children of Israel. Right against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, "Verse two, you only have I known of all the families of the earth." If it was talking about everybody, why would it? It would say, "All." It says, "All people have I known." It would say, "All people have I known of all the families of the earth." It don't say that there. It says, "You only." So it's it's giving. It's, the scriptures speak in plural when you go into the scriptures. It's, it's, it's speaking plural. It would say. It would say. It wouldn't say you only. It would say, "All people have I known of all the families of the earth." It does not say that. It says, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. So the Lord is already telling you who he's dealing with. It says, therefore, I will punish you because we broke the old covenant. That's why we're in a temporal punishment now. That's why we're at the bottom now. That's why the 17 heathen nations is ruling over us. And we got to go to their stores, their banks, their schools, get their jobs, right? Go to their schools, their jobs, dress like them, wear their clothes, right? Get their haircuts and their worlds of... Of how we are to dwell. We have to follow the heathen. The heathen became the head. And we became the tail. Because what? We broke the old covenant. So when you read the scriptures there. 
That was a punishment upon the Israelites. That's why we're at the bottom now. It says, verse 2, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities because we broke the old covenant. We didn't keep the law, statutes, and commandments. So when you go in the New Testament and it mentioned about the Messiah coming down on the earth like John 3, 16, that's talking about the Israelites, the elect. That's talking about the Israelites. That's not talking about all people there. That's, that word world goes into the meaning of the word cosmos, government or constitution. That's talking about Israelites. That's not talking about everybody. Everybody's not going to be saved, man. Now, everybody's not going to be saved. Only the Israelites. The Israelites are going to be saved. This is Psalms 147, right? And verse 19. And it says, He showeth His word. The Lord showeth His word to who? He showeth His word unto Jacob, the Israelites. His statutes and His judgments unto Israel. Unto Israel. It would say all people in there. It don't say that. It says, it says His judgments unto Israel, the Israelites. Verse 20. He have not dealt so with any nation. Lord ain't dealing with every fucking body. He said, he said, he have not dealt so with any nation. He's only dealing with the Israelites. It says, and as for his judgments, his judgments, not our judgments, the Lord's judgments, right? His judgments. And for his judgments, the Lord's, they have not known them. Praise you the Lord. See the Lord. So the Lord is dealing with who? The Israelites. He's not dealing with everybody. He's not dealing with everybody. Deuteronomy 32 because you're going to have people that say, well, we all came from Adam. We absolutely did come from Adam. We all came from Adam. But the sons of Adam were wicked. The Lord segregated the nations, right? And he chose the nation of Israel to be a special people unto himself. The Lord made a covenant of Father Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We come from we come from Shem, and we come from Jacob, which is which is Israel. We're the Israelites. The so-called Negro, Hispanics, Native American Indians, we're the Israelites. Deuteronomy 32 and 8, it says, When the Most High divided the nations, their inheritance. See? The Lord divided the nations because the sons of Adam were wicked. It says when he separated the sons of Adam because the sons of Adam were wicked, right? It says he set the bonds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. He's dealing with the Israelites. Verse 9, it says for the Lord's portion is his people, his people. It would say all people there. It says for the Lord's portion is his people. It would say the Lord's portion is all people. It don't say all people there. It says his people who are the Israelites. It's speaking plural. It's letting you know. It says Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. That's who the Lord is dealing with. That's who the Lord is dealing with. Dealing with. Romans 9 and 1. Let's go to Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul was an Israelite. So when he written those epistles, they were given to the foreign Israelites, the Israelites. Romans 11 and 1. I say then have the most high cast away his people. Is the Lord done away with Israel? He's done away with Israel now. He ain't dealing with Israel. He's dealing with everybody. No. Let's read that. I say then have the most high cast away his people. So the Lord is done away with Israel? God forbid. No. God, God forbid means no. So no, he's not done away with Israel. Israel is not just, oh, Israel's done away now. The Lord's just grafted in everybody. No, that's not what the scripture is saying. The Lord has not cast away his people, right? It says, for I also am Israelite, Apostle Paul, I also am Israelite of the seed of Abraham, see, of the tribe of Benjamin. So he's telling you he's an Israelite. That's what he's telling you. Apostle Paul was an Israelite. Now, when we read these epistles, that's for to the foreigner Israelites. Romans 1 and 9. Romans 9 and 1. I say... I say the truth in Yahweh Shai, I lie not. My conscience also bear me witness in the Holy Spirit. See, verse 2, it says that I have great heaviness and continually sorrow in my heart. Why did Apostle Paul have great sorrow and heaviness in his heart? Because he felt bad for his people, right? The Israelites. Verse 3, for I could wish that myself were accursed from Yahweh Shai for my brother. And he's talking about the Israelites. My kinsmen according to the flesh. If Apostle Paul said in Romans 11 and 1 that he was an Israelite, so who is he talking to right here in this scripture here in his letters of his epistles? The Israelites. Romans 9 and 4. Who are Israelites? Who are what? Who are Israelites to who pertaineth the adoption, the glory, and the covenants, and the giving of the law, and the service of Yahweh, Bashim Shai, and the promises. That's all given to the Israelites. Verse 5, it says... I'll stop there. But verse 4 says, Who are Israelites to who pertain the adoption, the glory, the covenants, and the giving of the law, and the service of the Most High, and the promises? That's given to the Israelites, man. Salvation is given to the Israelites. That's who salvation is given to. Let's finish this with this. Acts 5, and let's wrap this up with this. And then we're going to play her clip again. Acts 5 and 29. Let's see who salvation is for. Let's see who the Lord died for. Acts 5 and 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey the Most High rather than men. Right? Verse 30. It says, The Most High of our fathers raised up Yahweh Shai, whom he slew and hung on a tree. Verse 31. Him have the Most High exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. So that's who salvation is only given to, the Israelites. 
Salvation is only given to the Israelites, man. So let's go back to this. We're going to wrap it up with this. Repent and follow the ways of Yahushua HaMashiach, our Hebrew Messiah. And you're going off. His name is Yahawashai HaMashiach. Yah means he. Hawashai means savior or deliverer. All right. Yah means he. Hawashai means savior or deliverer. Ha Mashiach. Ha means the. Right. Ha goes into the Hebrew grammar of H-I 88.61. Which is the, right? The. Mashiach means anointed. So it's the anointed. The anointed, he saves or delivers. That's the name of the Messiah. Not Yehushua. There's no you in Hebrew. Messiah came in the flesh, didn't deny his bloodline, and still shared the gospel. Make sure you are in the word for yourself to ensure that you aren't. As someone who knows that she is a Hebrew Israelite, I want it to be known that salvation is for everyone. If you repent and follow the ways of Yahushua HaMashiach, our Hebrew Messiah, you can be saved. If you are... No, you cannot be saved. You cannot be saved. You have to be of Israelite descent to be saved. That's in the scriptures. Everybody's not going to be saved. Salvation is not for everybody. We proved it. We proved it in the scriptures. So again... Salvation is only given to the Israelites. Not all, everybody on earth is going to be saved. That's not, that's not true. That's, that's Roman Catholic doctrine. That's the religion of the 501c3 of Christianity of this world. They teach that madness. But according to the scriptures, salvation is only given to the Israelites. This is why, again, you women out there, stop fucking talking. Shut your mouth and listening. Because one thing, like the elders, Apostle Great Millstone say, our elders said this, uh, Big Bro uh, Am Amawan uh, Gabar. Big Bro Amawan Gabar. Right? You don't learn by speaking. You learn by what? Listening. You learn by listening, not flapping gums. So Lord Willis Lessons that are fine. She does not know the scriptures. The Lord ain't dealing with her, man. And this is what happens when you are a woman that don't have a man over you. Because when you have a man over you, you start making bold points and bold statements that don't make sense and that is not true according to scriptures. You women read Proverbs 9 and 13. That's what you need to read. You women that's like her, I got homework for you. Go in your Bible and read Proverbs 9 and 13. You don't know nothing. You don't know nothing. Learn. Learn in silence. Stop flapping gums and learn with silence. You cannot save your slave master. Your slave master is going into slavery according to Revelations 9 and verse uh, Revelations uh, 13 and 9 through 10. He's going into slavery. All right. Revelations 13, 9 through 10. Your slave master is going into slavery. So, hey, Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. I'm not going to play this madness. It's ridiculous. Salvation is only given to the Israelites, man. Shalom.